This is the third lesson on the normal distribution. Today we're looking at the inverse normal distribution. In all of the questions we've done so far, uh, we've used upper and lower limits, upper and lower values to find their area. Today we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to be using um, the area to help us to find the upper or lower limit. That's why it's called the inverse normal distribution. So in this inverse, normal distribution what we're doing is we we have an area and we're using it to find either upper or lower limit that means we need to change the mode on our calculator um, so menu and seven again so menu and seven That will take you to the the distributions uh, menu um, and we want inverse normal so now you press three and that will take to you this thing that says inverse normal and what you'll see on this inverse normal is if you select it which is number three um, I'll press that you'll see that the options are area standard deviation and mean so they're the three values that it wants now really important that the class whiz calculator the fx 991 ex what it's expecting is an area from the left so when you type your area in it, it needs to be the area from the left tail now if you've got the Casio graphic calculator you can tell it yep I want the area from the right tail but it's really important that when you're using your calculator that your calculator is expecting you to type in the area from there that means if you have a question where that's the worst normal distribution shape ever that one and you have this area over this side you will need to work out this area here and type that in okay so it's always the area from the left tail so if you have the area on the right hand side you'll need to do one minus that area to give you the area over here this is the bit that it wants that's what it's expecting and if you get an incorrect answer it's probably because you've given the area from the right tail okay so let's have a look at um, some questions here so um, you can see it's a normal distribution again we've been given the mean and we've been given the variance I'm gonna write those down somewhere in a moment and it says find to two decimal places the value of a such that so we need to find what a is and we've got these three questions here now this is more straightforward than binomial because you know sometimes the value of a you find you need to take one away from it or add one one to it you don't need to do that with the normal distribution it's much more straightforward okay but I'm still going to draw a diagram so mean is 20 variance 3 squared standard deviation 3 okay so let's look at a and let's draw what we have right so it's my normal distribution um, the mean is in the middle that's 20 there and it's saying that a value of a it's less than a number and its area is 0.75 percent now if you're going to have a less than area it means that your area is going to start somewhere and go this way yeah because it's it's less than now does it start over here or does it start over here and go less than we'll look at the size of the number 
0.75. It's more than half. So that means that you're going to be going from this side down to the bottom. If you went from this side down to the bottom, that would be less than 0.5. So something like this would give you a value, an area uh, less than 0.5. Whereas something like this will give you an area greater than 0.5. And since the area is greater than 0.5, we know our value of A is over here. That's the importance of drawing a diagram. So we know that this area here is 0.75. So on our calculators, um, we can type in an area because this is an area from the left. Yeah, 0.75, it's starting from the left and it's going up that way. So area 0.75, it's an area from the left, which is what it wants. Um, standard deviation of three, mean of 20. And I get a value of X as 22.02. Now we expect A to be bigger than 20 and it is. So the answer, is right it's the right type of size yeah so a uh, I'll go to two decimal places so 22.02 now I could do three significant figures that's fine oh it says two decimal places so uh, we'll get that okay part B right again uh, normal distribution diagram like this our mean is still 20 it's in the middle and this time it says the area is greater than a so that means it's an area starting somewhere maybe starting over here and going that way or maybe started somewhere over this side of the mean and going up that way again the size of the number will tell us where we're going to start so it says greater than so we know it's starting from the left and going up to the right but it says that area is 0.4. Now, if my, if I put my value of A over this side, on the left-hand side of the mean, that would give me an area greater than 0.5. If I start on the right-hand side of the mean, I end up with an area less than 0.5. And because this area is less than 0.5, the value of A must be on this side because it says the area above it is 0.4. Let's get my line back down here. So this area here, that area is 0.4. Right, so now I need to see that, can you see the area is not from the left hand tail? I need to tell my calculator this area, the one I'm shading in yellow, otherwise I'll get the wrong answer. It's expecting an area from the left hand tail, which means that actually what I type in on my calculator for the area is not 0.4, but 0.6. So area 0.6, the area from the left hand tail, three for the standard deviation, 20 for the mean, and I end up uh, uh, with a value of A as 22, 20, sorry, 0.76. Again, it's above 20, which we're expecting it to be. Now, what would happen if I put the wrong area in? So if I go back and I put an area of 0 0.4 in, I get a value less than 20 which I can see can't be right based on the information because the calculator is interpreting that 0.4 as the area from the left hand tail. So this is where diagrams are really important. And a last example of this, for my normal distribution like this, and it says, uh, well, let's put the mean in first 20. And this is an area between two values one is 16 and the other one is a now 16 is going to be over here the only thing is i don't know 
whether A is here, it could be there, or A could be over here. It's possible A could be in either one of those places and the area is 0 0.3. So it could be that this area is 0 0.3 or it could be that this area is 0 0.3. So actually my value of A could be greater than 20 or less than 20. Um, all I know is that it's going to be bigger than 16. And that area is uh, 0.3. Now remember, the calculator wants an area um, up to the fr or from the left hand side. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, I basically need, let's say that A is all the way up here. I, I need to know what this area is. I know that this area is 0.3, so that bit's 0.3. I want to know what this extra bit is down here, what's that, that area. So this is where we go back. Um, and if you press option one, and we're gonna go back to the normal CD two, I'm gonna put a tiny lower value in, at least five standard deviations lower than 16. I'm just gonna put zero in for my lower value, uh, upper value of 16. And I have three and 20 as my mean. And that gives me that this area here, that's basically this, this bit here, and that area is 0.0912, okay? So that's that area there. Um, and I know that the, the area up to A, or from 16 to A is 0 0.3. So if I add 0 0.3 to that value, so I'll need to go to menu one, and I'm gonna do my answer plus 0 0.3, I now get the area from the left tail up to A. So I've worked out that the area up to 16 is 0.0912 by just going back to normal CD. That's the area up to 16. I know from 16 to A to 0.3. That means that the area up to A is 0.0912 plus 0.3 and that gives you 0.3912 okay because I need the area up to A. I only started with the area between 16 and A so I want the area from the bottom tail left hand tail up to 16 which I worked out normal CD add that to 0 0.3 I now know the area up to A. Now I can go back and work out what A is. So uh, option again, or menu seven, inverse normal number three. My area now is what I just worked out. So I can use the answer button or type in 0 0.3912. Um, my standard deviation is three, my mean is 20. That gives me a value of A as 19.17, so A equals 19.17. So I had to go backwards and forwards between different modes. The reason being, I need the area up to a point from the left. And sometimes we don't always have that. We need to go back and work out um, what that is. And actually the value of A here is less than 20. So in fact, it was over that side, but we wouldn't have known until we worked out the, the final answer. Right, here's another one. Plates are made using a particular manufacturing process. They've got a diameter to D. Uh, normal distribution, so first thing is to write down what the mean is, what the variance is, what the standard deviation is. Given that 60% are the plates are less than x find x so diagram uh, 20 in the middle 
60% are less than X. If it's 60% and it's less than, it has to be over here because less than is this side. And if I stopped over this side, that would be less than 0.5 or less than 50%. It's more than 50%. Okay, so this is the value of X here, which we're trying to find. This area here is 60% or 0.6. Uh, find X, we can do that because we have the value from the left, uh, the area from the left, which is 60%. Um, so area of 0 0.6, 1.5 for standard deviation, mean of 20. And we get a value of X as 20.38. So that's done two decimal places um, part B find the interquartile range well we know about interquartile range it's at 25% and 75% I'm still going to draw a diagram with my mean here and if I want to find a lower quarter that's Q1 I know that this area here is 25% if I want to find the upper quartile so upper quartile which is Q3 let's use a different color then I know that this area is 75% so to find a lower quartile all I do for Q1 I set the area as 0.25 for the upper quartile I'll set the area as 0.75 that's all I need to do okay and then once we find those values we can work out what the interquartile range is so if I go back and set the area as 0.25 same uh, standard deviation of mean I'll get 18.25 um, nine, I'm going to write out a few decimal places, nine, oops, nine, eight, eight, two, six, five, six, three. I'm just going to write the whole thing out because I'm going to use it in a minute. The upper quartile, just press um, AC and change that to 0 0.75. And now I get 21 point zero one one seven three four three seven okay so my interquartile range i q r is just going to be q3 minus q1 so that's this 21.0117347 take away 18.9888 eight two six five six three and we get an interquartile range of two point zero two three or probably two point zero two would have been fine for that yeah so interquartile range just means areas of twenty five percent and seventy five percent right you should be now be in a position where you can do exercise three C on pages 46 to 47.